Hello and welcome to the Cars Ireland YouTube channel. My name is Anthony and as you can probably tell, I am not Sinead. Sinead is taking a few months off and I'm sure you're very disappointed to be stuck with me, but she will be back, I promise. Uh, just stick with me for the next few months and we'll get through this together. Please don't unsubscribe, please. <laughs> Today we are reviewing the all new Kia Exceed. It is handily based on the seat and it sits somewhere between the Seed and Sportage. A bit taller than the Seed, a bit shorter than the Sportage. I'll let you decide for yourself what you think about the styling. I'm quite a big fan of it. I do really like the yellow. It's called Quantum Yellow to be precise, and it's certainly striking in a world of very boring SUVs. It is a bit of a mishmash in styling terms. You get some SUV cues like the cladding around the wheel arches and side sills, but you get a nice coupe slope on the roof to give yourself that feeling of dangerous, like you're still young, even though you're not. Now, boot space is 426 litres, which is actually 30 more than the standard seed hatchback, thanks to this longer overhang creating a longer boot. It is more than its competitors, including the Toyota CHR and Audi Q2. Very similar amount of space to a Nissan Qashqai and the all-new Mazda CX-30, but less than a Volkswagen T-Roc. If you put the rear seats down flat, it increases to just under 1,400 litres. Now, the XC does have quite a high load lip here, but thankfully, Kia have thought about that and have included an adjustable boot floor. There is some luggage hooks and a little strap here for any more awkward items that you might have. All in all, it's quite an impressive boot. Uh, this shape will affect certain things that you do put into it, but other than that, it's all very nice. Not a fan of the fake exhaust, so sorry. Now, as I've stated about 15 times at this stage, the Exceed is based on the Seed, but it's 85 millimeters longer, which doesn't sound like much, but it does make a difference back here. The front seat is set up to my driving position, and I'm six foot tall, and I'd happily sit behind myself without any real gripes in the leg space area. It's, it's small, but it's it's okay. Uh, head space is tight enough, thanks to that sloping coupe roof style. The only downside is maybe it's a bit dark. The, the doors are quite high, windows are quite shallow. Big black area back here, dark headlining. If you had claustrophobic tendencies, you mightn't be too happy back here. Uh, there is a nice leather bound armrest with two cup holders, keep everyone happy back here. Uh, I don't know if you'd happily fit three adults across the back. There is quite a low lip down here, but if you had to fit three people across here, yeah, it might get uncomfortable and headroom is a bit of a joke if you're anyway tall here in the middle. I have been reliably informed by a dad and a dad-to-be that these Isofix access points are very impressive and easy to get to, and the top tether one is also a great option to have. Welcome to the interior of the Kia Exceed. I think the first thing you'll notice is all the yellow everywhere. Now, personally, I am a big fan of these honeycomb stitch seats. They really lift the interior and give it a brighter feeling than maybe if it was all dark. This yellow is an option, but it's sort of a strange setup in that on this particular car, the yellow is matched to the outside color. But if you pick a red, black, silver car, you can only specify this yellow color pack. You can't match it to the, to the color of the car, which is a strange one, but I actually quite like it. And I think it really lifts what would be quite a dark interior without all this yellow everywhere. Imagine all of this is black and it'd just be a bit dull and life's too short. The interior has a very premium feel in fairness to Kia. If you're still someone who has that notion that Kia is a cheap brand, you should really drop that by now at this stage. There's a lovely soft touch dash, leather covered steering wheel, which is a very high quality, really soft to touch. Gear stick is nice and pleasant, can't give out about that really. Uh, this particular bit under the dash, slidey bit under the dash, is very nice and has a lovely tactile feel to it. The only real gripes about the interior, I would say, if I was being very, very picky, was the cheaper grade leather on the, around the gear stick and the armrest cubby holder is a bit cheap feeling but like I said I'm being very picky here. 
Now, practicality is very impressive in the Kia Exceed. You get a nice little cubby hole here for your phone, which actually has wireless charging on this particular model. Two cup holders in the front center part and a rather deep and decent armrest storage space. Now, I will have to clarify everything I say here with the fact that I am in the top spec K4 model. Thankfully for me, Kia do keep things nice and simple with their trim levels. There is the K2 at entry level, which costs roughly 26,000 euro. The K3 is the middle of the range at 28,000 euro, and this top level K4 is 30,000 euro. I won't go too far into specs as we will be here all day, but in all honesty, the middle of the range K3 is probably your best bet. All you really lose out on is the heated steering wheel and seats, a bit of lumbar support, the smart proximity key, and this 12 inch screen behind the steering wheel, which looks lovely, but it does very little different to what the standard analog setup would do. The 10.25 inch touchscreen is standard on K3 and K4 models. You do lose the sat nav and wireless phone charging on the K2 spec. The system responds quickly and looks of a high quality and you get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on all trim levels. Okay, let's have a chat about engines. There are currently two on offer in the Exceed range, uh, one petrol and one diesel. The petrol option is a three-cylinder turbocharged unit with 120 PS and the diesel option is a 1.6 diesel with 116 PS. There will be a 1.6 hybrid coming in early 2020, but we're not sure of specific dates yet. And unfortunately for Ireland, the two higher performance petrol engines, namely a 1.4 turbo and a 1.6 turbo petrol, will not be coming here. I, I really would have been interested to see what those type of engines would have done in this car. It's actually quite fun and it would have been really interesting to see what they could do. Today we are driving the one liter petrol engine and to be honest it's perfectly suited to this car. It really will suit most buyers. It gets up to motorway speed without any real hassle, no drama. Now not that it's massively important in a car like this but uh, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour takes 11.3 seconds and on the fuel economy front Kia quote official figures of 5.5 litres per 100 kilometres. Now in truth, this car is not gonna get that and in my week with the car, I have gotten between seven and eight litres per 100 kilometres, which is 35 to 40 mpg if you're still using the Queen's money. Now when you do get up to those motorway speeds, it's actually quite comfortable. There is a bit of road noise and wind noise. I'm guessing the road noise is because of those larger 18 inch alloys. But in truth, I wouldn't have any hesitation in recommending this to someone who does regular motorway driving. It's uh, very comfortable. Now, if you were doing more regular motorway driving, I wouldn't really have a problem with recommending this car. It does cover 80 to 120 kilometers an hour without any massive drama. There is enough torque on offer and you really don't have to wring the neck of the engine to get moving. Obviously, the diesel is probably your better bet if you're doing motorway driving every day. But for someone who does it, maybe twice a week, something like that. I really wouldn't have any problem in recommending it. When you are up to motorway speed, the road and wind noise are noticeable, but honestly, it's not that big a deal. It's probably the 18 inch alloys, and actually for the look of them, it's probably worth it. Right, so this is the part where I actually have to come up with some all encompassing conclusion to summarize the Kia Seed. And to be honest, I'm kind of struggling with one. I'm not sure if you buy it with your heart or your head. Maybe, maybe somewhere in the middle, like your lungs. I think if you had two children between like the age of six and 14, and you were looking for something a bit different from your typical crossover, or something with a bit more personality than the standard hatchback, like the Civic or Golf, it's definitely worth a look. Um, but uh, if you do buy one, please buy it in this quantum yellow. It really is a refreshing color and lifts a dull and dreary car park amongst all the silvers blacks, reds. Yeah, it, it's worth a look, definitely. Oh, please uh, like and subscribe. And please don't unsubscribe because Sinead is not here.